So the world's richest deposit of potassium is located in Western Canada in a province known as Saskatchewan. It is the prairie evaporite deposit. And this has maybe 10 billion metric tons of potassium chloride in the form of sylvite and halite located in these deep, deep mine shafts. And what they do is they pump a solution of brine deep into these mine shafts. They then pump the solution back to the surface. They evaporate out that solution and they harvest that potassium chloride, which they then export all over the world as potassium fertilizer, also known as potash. The origin of potash comes from the colonial days when people would burn wood as part of their soap making process. And they would then filter the ash, they would then take the uh, evaporated potassium chloride crystals, mix it back in and they would make soap. But the ash residue on the pot known as pot ash became the alternate name for potassium. Today, you guessed it, we're talking about potassium. So let's get into it. All right, so with potassium, we wanna understand potassium as this key macronutrient for plant growth and plant development. So how do we understand that a little bit better? With phosphorus, we were looking at phosphorus as an element that really played that energy molecule role. With potassium, the filter that I want you to understand is as a transport or as a gatekeeper element. Potassium is essential for that movement of nutrient and solution in and out of cells. So the four key areas that we're gonna tune into with potassium are nutrient uptake, we're gonna look at uh, the enzymatic activity that potassium regulates. We will look at stomatal regulation. And then fourth and finally, an overall stress tolerance that potassium supports in plant growth. So this first category of nutrient transport, in order to understand that we just have to define a key term here, and that is osmotic potential or osmotic pressure. So osmotic potential is really just measuring the concentration of nutrients at a cellular level. And when that concentration drops, potassium is there as a signaling transport element that, that then shuttles more solution and more nutrients into that cell. So osmotic potential is a fundamental aspect of cellular biology and potassium is there in that key moment to regulate that osmotic pressure and to manage that transport of nutrients back and forth in that moment when that nutrient solution drops, whether it's on a sugar, amino acid, ionic, any level potassium is there as that signaling element that is going to regulate that nutrient transport. So the second category here of enzyme activation. So what are enzymes? Why do we care about enzyme activation and the fact that potassium is responsible for about 60 different enzymatic processes in the soil? So enzymes are simply naturally occurring proteins in the soil that are generated by microbes and, and all of the microbial activity in the soil, again, which is why fertility and biology continue to be this uh, ongoing conversation that we continue to, to beat the drum about. But a really good example of an enzyme that is naturally occurring that uh, everyone can relate to is in milk, right? So a lot of people have lactose intolerance to milk. Well, that's because the lactase, which is the enzyme that is present in milk, is cooked out of the milk when it is pasteurized. So you end up with a milk that has no lactase in it, but it still has the lactose, which is the milk sugar. So in raw milk, you have the lactase that is still present. And so it can actually break down that lactose if you drink raw milk and it's got that lactase, then you've got that enzyme present and you don't have the same response that you do when you're drinking milk that has the lactose but doesn't have the enzyme. The point is that enzymes are critically important to the breakdown of uh, different organic matter and the overall process in that soil web is hugely critical for, uh, for enzymes to be healthy, active, and, and, and at work. And potassium plays a role in all of those different enzymatic functions. Potassium can glom on to these different amino acids and activate that, that process in a way that is essential to keeping that enzymatic activity flowing. 
The third category here of stomatal regulation goes back to that osmotic potential or osmotic pressure. Potassium, again, there as a gatekeeper in those guard cells works in tandem with calcium in order to make sure that those stomata are opening and closing in a timely fashion when that, that turgor or that pressure in that leaf is at that, that point when it needs to open those stomata. If potassium is not present, you have a latent effect. And then that transpiration of that plant is not optimal. The nutrient cycling is slowed down and the whole system breaks down. So stomatal regulation is critically important and potassium plays a huge role again, as that nutrient transport and as that gatekeeper molecule there. In the fourth and final category of stress tolerance, it's really just an overlap of all of the other categories that we've just talked about. When a plant is under stress, whether it's drought or pest or some other, you know, heat, cold, any of the inputs that ultimately would cause some stress for that plant, because potassium is that transport or gatekeeper element, we look at all of those different systems that the that potassium is regulating, whether it's the uh, osmotic potential, the uh, enzymatic activity, regulating pH, ionic transport, all of the different things that potassium is there to do. When a plant is under stress, it is even more critical that that optimal level of potassium is ensuring that all of those different systems are happening in an optimal way during that stressful phase for that plant. So all of these different aspects all have that common unifying theme of the transport gatekeeper aspect that potassium represents in the soil web. All right, so that's a good overview of the, the role that potassium plays in a lot of those key metabolic functions for the plant and plant growth. One final thing that I wanna double click on here and tune into has to do with ratios. So one of the ratios that we pointed out in our calcium video was this ratio of calcium to magnesium to potassium as a six to one to one ratio. So one of the things that we wanna make sure that we're clear on is that ratio of one to one for potassium to magnesium. We feel like in our cultivation practice and all the soil reports that we have studied now for months and months and months, it is challenging to get to that one to one ratio. But as long as your potassium and your magnesium are in that range of where they need to be, you don't have to stress it too much. The most important thing is to ultimately make sure that that calcium is the dominant cation in your soil web and that magnesium and potassium are at least close to that one to one ratio. Even if you're not achieving a perfect one to one ratio, that at least it's in that close proximity. If you get them too asymmetrical, then you're going to run into some issues where you're going to end up locking out that potassium. So when you're tuning into your soil reports, really just make sure that you're focusing on that one to one ratio of potassium to magnesium. If you are concerned about your magnesium and your potassium ratio, let's assume that your magnesium is out of whack and it's too high. One of the gold standards for lowering that magnesium level in the soil is to simply bring gypsum to the party. So we add gypsum to our soil piles that we amend on a regular basis for two things. We do it for the calcium primarily. But the second added benefit is that that gypsum will bind with the magnesium and the magnesium ultimately gets converted to magnesium sulfate and is much easier to wash that out of the soil pile or wash that through the pots as uh, the plants grow through that cycle. So. Gypsum as an additive to regulate or, or minimize that the impacts of elevated magnesium is a solution that you can look at for that as well. The second ratio that I want you to tune into is that of potassium to sodium. So in our cultivation, because we use control release fertilizers that are salt based, the sodicity or the salinity, the sodium levels, all part of this same conversation, are something that we have been very, very hyper-focused on to make sure that as we're recycling our soil, as we're reusing our soil, that we keep that sodicity in check. And we do that in a number of different ways. But what we're looking for on our soil reports is that relationship where that sodium level is kept in check and the relationship between our potassium and our sodium remains at least close to this four to one ratio. Again, we don't always achieve that, but it's simply to say that maintaining a focus on that ratio and being aware of that ratio is something that is important in terms of informing the overall soil health and the way that that sodium level is, is important to keep in check. So main takeaway from today's video is potassium is that transport element. It's a critical component in so many of these metabolic functions for the plant. And if you're looking at a soil report and you're like, hey, 
Tom, I need some potassium in my soil. What should I do? So the two different camps, of course, that we uh, have talked about on a number of occasions is the, you know, the salt-based fertilizer camp or the organic amendment camp. So depending on which camp you're in, uh, Beanstalk Agriculture has, of course, their K-Boost, which is a phenomenal product, and an easy, quick application of K-Boost is going to raise your potassium levels uh, effortlessly. And if you're in the organic camp, we always are a fan of the soluble kelp. So typically the NPK on a soluble kelp product is going to be, you know, 0010 or 0020. Um, it's just, it's all about potassium. Plus you get a ton of great trace uh, minerals and, and micronutrients in that, in that kelp as well. So those would be two inputs to think about including in your cultivation practice if you're looking to increase that potassium. So hopefully that helped uh, explain a lot of the different aspects of potassium. And of course, as always, let's cultivate.